Today, we are going to talk to you about RV living with dogs. What you really need to know. And how important some of the items that we want to show you today are. So this is Sky, and we have been full-time RVing with our dog Sky for Just almost a year, a year, year and a half. So we're going to get down to it because we've got a lot to cover. So I'm Alice. I'm Gordon. And we've got so many things to show you and to share with you. So some of the things we're gonna to cover today is helping your dog transition to RV living, RV parks and campgrounds and what you need to know about those, healthcare and veterinarians, activities you can do with your dog while you're on the road, what to do on travel days, and what do you do with them when you go places. All very important things to plan out ahead of time. And things we've learned over the last four years of being in our RV with Sky. So let's start out with helping your dog transition to RV living. Um, so certain things you can help with, like the bed, a dog bed, right? So yeah. if you don't have a dog bed that's small enough to fit in your truck or in the trailer where the dog's gonna be, I would suggest go get one mm -hmm. and let the dog use it while you're still in your house before you transition to the trailer. That way she's used to it or he's used to it and then when it's in the truck or trailer they understand exactly what it is and it's something familiar. Yeah. It's got your scent on it, it's got your, your, your dog scent on it, um, so it's definitely more of that comfort that they need. Pick some of their favorite toys. Yes. I mean, Sky had a great big bucket full of all <laughs> kinds of toys. And we knew that when we left our house and went full time, that she wouldn't be able to have that many toys. Right. So we picked the ones we thought was her favorites. Mostly her balls. And she has a favorite toy that we use at dog parks. And we'll get into that later. Um, I like this toy because I don't have to touch the slimy ball. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good thing. Something to think about. <laughs> And if you've got your trailer before you're going full time, take your dog with you on some of your weekends or maybe even plan a one or a two week long vacation yeah. where you're taking your dog with you so your dog gets to understand the whole difference. The and difference. You, and you want to do some travel days, right? Because yeah. it can't all just be going from the house to the lake that's three hours down the road and then spending a week or two at the lake and then traveling back to home. Right. You really want to get them used to being in the car for six or eight hours, which is probably what most people drive on travel days, yeah. and understand how to work with that. We got really lucky with that because Sky just loves to be in the, tr in the truck, and so that was never a problem for us. Uh, but we have had dogs that didn't like to be in a vehicle. Right. So that's something that you need to think about. The second section is RV parks and campgrounds. So there's some things about RV parks and campgrounds that some people just don't seem to understand. Right. And probably the biggest one is that RV parks and campgrounds will discriminate against dogs in certain cases. Certain breeds. Okay? Now it's not just breeds, but there's three reasons. You know, we have found that most RV parks don't like a dog that's over 50 pounds. We have found that. Um, they don't like what has been called a dangerous breed, which of course we don't agree with because we think <laughs> all dogs are a reflection of their owners. Right. Um, but German Shepherds, Rottweilers, pit bulls. pit bulls. I see pit bulls almost everywhere. Uh, so so if careful. you have one of those breeds, you may have a problem or a potential problem getting into an RV park or a campground. Yeah, I think the smallest one I've seen is nothing over 35 pounds. Right. And I was like, what? So I just moved on and found right. another campground. And there are some parks that won't allow pets at all. There are. So you will run into that. 
Um, and you know, a thing that you need to think about too is as dog owners, you need to make sure that when you are at an RV park or a campground that you are abiding by the rules they have in place, whether it's leash rules and mm -hmm. keeping your dog on a leash or picking up after your pet, because yeah. it's everyone abiding by those rules that allow us all to be able to take our dogs with us mm -hmm. to these parks. Yep. We have unfortunately seen people, I mean, the dogs are great, but still, you, you know, there are rules. Uh, dogs walking off leash, um, we've seen people let their dogs do their droppings and then just keep on walking. Um, so we are definitely not one of those people. Uh, right. So and so be, just be cautious about that right. type of stuff too. One more thing for RV parks and campgrounds that we've been running into recently is vaccination records. Oh yeah. We've been asked at a couple of the parks recently for Two so far. rabies vaccination. So I would yes. suggest either keep a photo or a scanned copy of the dog's rabies vaccination yep. on your phone or keep the actual paperwork in the truck. Yeah. That way when you go to check in, if they require a cop to, if they need to see it, you have it available. Right, yes. New Hampshire is the first place that we've been asked for a copy of the uh, rabies certificate. Oh, and the state park in New York. Uh, so a year and a half, I've been asked twice. <laughs> but we had it both but times. But we had it both times, yes. So the next topic is healthcare and veterinarian care. Um, we have healthcare for Skye. She is on the Embrace policy. She's been on that since she was a puppy. We started it out. She is our only dog who has ever had health insurance. Um, and it's a great policy. We've used it. Um, there's different policies out there um, for healthcare. So just do some research and check and see if it's something that is something that you'd like to do. The cost is actually very low for that. And for your veterinarian care, you know, how do you, how do you do your veterinarian care when you're on the road? Um, we've been pretty lucky uh, of not having to really do anything. Uh, but Sky was in need of her rabies shot when we were in California. So we went to one of their rabies clinics that the tractor supply company put on over the weekend. And that's where she got basically kind of like a checkup and she got all of her... She got updated on all of her All vaccines. of her shots and mm -hmm. the rabies. We brought um, in our shot record with us for her. So we got yeah. the rabies shot and everything else that she needed that she was due yeah. for. And it was relatively cheap and saved the cost of a vet visit. So as you're traveling, you can kind of keep an eye in areas that you're traveling through for those kind of pet health fairs that they do. Mm -hmm. Another thing, everywhere. another thing I would recommend is um, if you have a dog that maybe has some sort of medical condition that it's been treated for or being treated for, when before you leave, maybe talk to your vet about getting a copy of their health records that mm, you can take with, with you, you that way sure. if you need to go and see a vet somewhere else in a different state you already have the records with you yeah and they can review those health records just like they would review my yeah, medical exactly records. i was going to say so you know just think of it as that as you you know you're going to take your health records with you right. i have mine um why not your dogs you know they're just as important so we're getting ready to get on to the fun stuff yes which is activities you can do with your dog. These are endless, you know, yes. and we have, we've done things with Sky over the last year and a half that we didn't do before because we didn't have a reason or yeah. didn't have the opportunity, such as kayaking and paddle boarding. Um, we used to have kayaks years ago, but when we were in Montana, we rented kayaks and took Sky with us in the kayaks, and she did pretty well. Yeah. And we just recently rented paddle boards, and Alice and I took Sky to the pond the other day to try and work with her and train her on sitting on a paddle board while we paddled around the lake. Oh my gosh, she did phenomenal. Totally surprised. How did good not she expect did. that. So, she did great. So that that's one that's a, a thing that you can think about. And now keep in mind you don't have to buy kayaks, you don't have to buy paddle boards. Most of your bigger sporting goods stores in the areas that we're talking yep. about, national parks or just bigger parks, 
will have some a rental, sort of rental. REI Absolutely. rents bicycles and kayaks and things. Yep. So you can go there and rent for fairly cheap prices, and especially if you don't have the space in a rig, too. Right. We bought the inflatable paddle boards because they roll up into a fairly small size and we have the ability to store them. Yeah. Now, keeping that in mind, another thing that you need to get if you do kayak or paddleboard with your dog is a life jacket. Life jacket. So, Skye is a very good swimmer. She likes to swim. She doesn't necessarily <laughs> like her She's life like, jacket. No, no, not that thing. But the reason we decided to get a life jacket for her is because we don't want to have to be limited to being right close to the bank right so if you're going across a small pond or a lake and you're you know a couple hundred feet out and she, she falls off, off or jumps off or you know you have some sort of an emergency the life jacket helps keep her floating yeah and actually she liked it a lot more than I thought she would uh, because she did a lot more swimming than what she it, normally right. would do. Uh, so that was pretty great, great to see that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so what's your next activity? Hiking, right? Oh yeah, hiking. Everybody likes to take their dog Oh my gosh. It. So some things to think about when it comes to hiking is a backpack. Yeah. So Sky kind of likes to roam around and bark and at people. She or, needs a job. She right? needs a so job. Putting the backpack on is like giving her a job. She now goes kind of into work mode. This is from <laughs> Rough Wear. Rough Wear. And Sky's out of here. She says, is, don't even. <laughs> I don't want to put that on. I don't want to go to work right now. But so what we do is we use the pockets and we have a collapsible, grab that collapsible. We have. We have a collapsible a water, water dish. dish, right? So Sky gets to carry her, her own, own water, water dish and a bottle of water in the pouch on the and other side. And I do side put two bottles of water in there, one on each side it. to keep it balanced, and it just gives her something to do. And we're going to put a piece of our wave uh, video in there to show you her with her backpack. And wow, what a different dog. I mean, she, she stayed right with It just kind of calms us. her down a little bit more. It, yeah, it really calmed her down. So think about that. If you have kind of a dog who likes to, is a little hyper on your trails, give them a job and put the backpack on them. It's phenomenal. And another thing that we put in our, in Sky's backpack actually, she carries this herself, yes. is it's called a Fido Pro Airlift. So this is in essence, it's just a sling system. So if Sky was to get injured, this allows me to sling it over my shoulders and I can put her in this and carry her. You know, she's a 50 pound dog. That so would be carry, a lot of weight. It, it would be a lot of weight to try and carry her like this. Yeah. The sling kind of goes underneath her entire body, lets her legs hang out and supports her and I can put her weight around my neck. That way I can carry her out to a spot where we can get her in a vehicle and get off the treatment. Thankfully, this is an emergency item only. Thankfully, we have never had to use it, right. and I hope we never do. But we have it in case we need it, just Correct. like your first aid kit. Um, another important thing is the booties. Booties. So we used these in Arizona. In Arizona, because of all the cactus, um, and Sky's not a big fan of them, but it takes her just a couple of minutes, and then she gets used to it, and she's fine. Um, but all of those pokies, everything that was out there, actually we used it in Utah at Canyonlands. Right. Um, and she used these. We also used them in the snow when we were up in Alaska because their feet need to be right. protected. Or these, just hot, hot um, pavement, right? Yeah, we all, hot we all pavement. Know, we all know that pavement, if you're in an area and you're going to be walking on that pavement. That could be 150 degrees. Right. You know, if you it's know. 95 outside in full sun, that pavement's very yeah. hot and they can burn their feet. So protect your dog's feet. We do that for sure. And one of our favorite items that we've had for years is the no spill water bowl. Yes. So it's not expensive. It's like $7.50 like, yeah. or something like that on Amazon. Cheap. You fill it up to just the bottom of the ring here, and when it tips over in the truck, no water comes out. It's an easy way to be able to keep water for the dog yeah. and not have to worry about making a mess in the back of the truck. Right. So travel days, how to help your dog be successful on travel days, yes. right? We touched on some of it a little bit earlier by taking them on longer road trips. 
But when you go on a road trip, I know the last thing I do before I get in the truck, start driving <laughs> for a couple of hours, is I use the bathroom. Grandpa Jackson. Right? So <laughs> taking the dog on a nice long walk and letting them take care of their business before putting them in the truck, maybe just tiring them out a little bit by throwing the ball, that's very helpful for them. Yes. Because they're going to be sitting or laying in a vehicle for hours when we stop at rest areas. Yep, just gotta get out, if, just like we If we, we do. gotta go, she's probably gotta go. If, she, if we wanna stretch our legs because we're getting a little tight, it's probably the same thing for her, right? Yeah. So make sure that you give your dog an opportunity to get out of the vehicle, roam around a little bit, and uh, you know stretch their legs also. On a leash, of course. On a leash, of course. <laughs> Especially in a rest area. So we have in the back of the truck for Skye on our travel day. She has a bed and a blanket that she really likes uh, just to make her comfortable so she's not laying on the hard floor um, and we don't have our seats down. Our seats are able to fold up so we have comfort back there for her also. You know, why not? And then we usually pack a lunch for yep. us, right? So when I remember. <laughs> we're packing, you know, snacks, lunch, whatever. Um, to eat while we're yep. traveling down the road. So the other thing we do is, since we're packing ourselves a snack, we pack a snack for the dog. So we get these on Amazon, um, and we also have been finding them in Costco, but lately we've been having a hard time finding them in Costco. But they are on Amazon, um, and these are, this one here is duck jerky. Uh, it's, there's duck, pea protein, as you know, that's it. I mean, it's just, it's whole. It's, it's like her favorite it's good, treat. And too. she absolutely loves it. Um, this is the sweet potato and duck wrap. So it's dehydrated duck wrapped around a dehydrated sweet potato. And that's pretty much all of your ingredients on this too. So we try to get really healthy snacks for her. So she's always looking for something to eat when we're eating. So I just pack her a little Ziploc bag full of her treats and she gets those why we eat our lunch also. So all of these products um, you are able to get on Amazon. Uh, we are Amazon affiliates and all of these products will be in the description below so you can click on that and it will take you right over to your Amazon page and you can shop and get whatever you you know like or need or whatever your pet would like um, and we get a small commission for that and you'll never even know it. So the last thing we're going to talk about is what to do with your dog when you go places. Um, this is the biggest thing and the hardest decisions that you're going to have to make probably mm -hmm. when it comes to the dog. For sure. Right? Because you need to go and do things or you want to go and do things. Not everywhere allows you to bring your dog, right. but you have to figure something out for your dog. So we have a camera that monitors a dog that we can access on our cell phones. We typically leave a little thermometer in view of the camera so we know what the internal temperature in the RV is. And we check it every half hour to make sure that nothing's gone wrong and the dog seems fine. Um, we try to limit our time that we're away to maybe six hours at a max if we want to go for a hike or something like that. Yeah. Um, and we try not to go too far away. We try not to be like a two hour drive away because in then- In case something right, happens, yes. Um, and we also take her with us when we can. Right. So if we're going to go out to eat, so there is an app and it is called Bring Fido. So with Bring Fido, and I'll screenshot some of this for you so you can see a little bit of how it works. But you can pick where you're at and then you can filter through restaurants or places for lodging, dog parks, things like that. Places that are you can bring your dog with you yes and we prefer to go to those kind of establishments anyway a place that has outdoor seating right. that allows you to bring your dog we've taken sky to many restaurants uh with us um and a lot of times i'll just call ahead and say hey do you guys have an outdoor seating area where we can bring our dog with us and um i've always i most of the time i've been told yes and so sky has gone to a lot of restaurants with us and we always leave either the AC or the heat on. Yep. Because it depends on you know what's, what's, what's the temperature outside temperature outside. like. Um, because we want to make sure that the internal temperature is comfortable for her. And the biggest thing that we do for her, I would say, is we leave a radio and or a TV on. Yeah. Because you know dogs are reactive. They hear things. They yeah. see things. They want to bark. 
Well, barking is very frowned upon when it becomes, when you're in an RV park. Right. So leaving the radio or the TV on creates... And all of your blinds pulled down, down. Right? Right. We leave the, the radio on with the volume up, not too loud, but loud enough to where those little subtle noises that are going on outside can't be heard by her and disturb her. Right. Sky is afraid of thunderstorms and the sounds that thunderstorms make. The She's heavy even, rain, the thunder. The heavy rain yeah. that beats on the roof, she doesn't like it. So if that's in the forecast, we'll postpone our plans to a day that we don't have to worry about it because we don't want her to be in a stressful environment like that without Alone. us being here. Right. Um, so if you like this video, make sure to check out the video right over here of our RV trip across the country. It was dubbed uh, Harvest Host Coast to Coast. Yes. And Sky loved it. 